It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Browns and the Steelers coming up next. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon and we are underway from Heinz Field from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback so the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive and they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback and I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Looking to throw on second down. Bradshaw. And his throw here is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Back to throw. Bradshaw. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. The Steelers send out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. It's taken to the 26. Oh, 
So holding there on the return, and that'll back him up to start the next drive. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call right there, partner. I think when the officials look in their manual and see the expression, jersey getting pulled, that's a flag coming out every time. The holding penalty and negates a good return as they'll start just past the 20. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. That's it, baby. We got work. He's tackled at the 34 yard line. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels, you know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. they will try to continue that trend here this afternoon. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I missed it, <laughs> it would have been a, been a long story. night. And just a yard to go here on second down. Now back to throw. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. They'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Boy, every time I see speed like that off the edge, Charles, I just don't know how these offensive linemen do it. I would think that they would get called for holding every play, and maybe they should have been called for holding on that one. Yeah, maybe not just holding, but sometimes you end up setting back in the offensive backfield a little bit farther to try and help you with the edge. That's a penalty as well. Sometimes you overset, they'll come inside of you. That's what speed does. It disrupts an offense. And right now, you've got to pay attention to this edge rush on every single down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. First and ten, Bradshaw. That would tipped and it's incomplete. A good hands there defensively, and it's second down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They hand this off to Harris. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. To throw on third down, Bradshaw. And this is going to be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one.
The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets his football out shy of the 30 to the 29. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. And sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And some room to run now. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 51 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. I don't care what the game plan was coming in. After these runs... You're running it, right? <laughs> you, you, you make sure you keep circling on your play sheet, running plays that are working, and keep patting those big offensive linemen on the back. They're doing a great job. It goes without saying, the defense is going to have to adjust to there. In a big way, and they've got to figure out, do they have to sell out to stop the run, or can they just do it better than what they've done so far? They'll run on first down. It's Brown, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback land on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. And he'll run on the inside handoff. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. They'll drop to throw. Complete to Newsom. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. On first down, Brown, and he will lose yardage here to the 31 yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Sometimes in the run game, you can make the argument that quickness beats size. And how about the example right here? That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. They'll set up a throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They'll look to throw here. And that one goes incomplete on the drive. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball.
So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got a first and 10 at their own 25. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. A throw left side to start out, that's complete. And he's gonna be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Looking to throw, Bradshaw. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Well, that was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact, ends up forcing the incompletion. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw. Bradshaw. That's into a crowd and intercepted. He's picked off near his own 48. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. That's Cameron Hayward who got in there to take him down. And that sack throws just looked like a case where a speedy defensive end is a little bit quicker than the offensive tackle. Yeah, it makes it difficult for a tackle to determine what exactly to do. Do you do the kick slide and try and get back in the pocket and meet him there? Do you meet him on the line of scrimmage where they call a quick set? In any event, right now, he's having his troubles. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. He'll look to throw. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. That catch good for five, it's third down. Throw here. 
firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is going to have a Browns Let's first go. down as they're Let's able go. to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And a short gain down to about the 33. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Out of the gun now on third down. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first attempt, this from 45. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice win for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing, he's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press, you'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Mike, Mike, check, check, 59, 59. To throw again, Bradshaw shoves him aside. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing on first down, Bradshaw. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. 
obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. I would say that would be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. The Steelers on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Back to throw again. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They defer to Brown to start the drive. Brown with a stick skills. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's at the lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So first and 10 now from the 30. This is Brown. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. He'll look to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a bronze first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him Charles come out with a shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's got this down go, to the 35. Here we go. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. 
That nearly picked. It's second down now. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They're going to look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. Looking to throw. Buying time to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. A good position to be in here, second and inches. They'll set up to throw. Pass incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. He'll drop to throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Browns are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're Let's hoping go to change that go. right here. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. to throw. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. That in the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. the gun they'll look to throw toward the end zone but that's gonna wind up incomplete and now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. And his kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. 
So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with a lead. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Browns. And even though they've got a halftime lead, they're likely devising ways as we speak to try and get a little more production from their passing game. And meanwhile, for the Steelers, they did not have quite the same amount of success in the passing game that their counterparts did, as you get a look at the numbers there. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. lead as well as we are back and underway taken in at the three and he had no room to run as he's tackled down Let's inside the 20. the browns offense getting set to go to work here to start the third and they've got the lead cd what do you expect from them in this second half well, I liked what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's second and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Well, the terrible towels here at Heinz Field out in full force. Here's third and long. On third down, he'll drop to throw. They fights him off. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. So good coverage there defensively as it looks like they'll force a punt on this opening drive of the third. Well, let's coach them up a little bit from right here in the booth. That's exactly what they needed to do. They need to start stringing together some stops, turning the ball over back to their offense, and trying to get back into this game. Yeah, a couple scores down, but they can eat into that quickly with a nice drive here on the other side. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. On 
on first down. Bradshaw. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Play fake. Bradshaw. That's swung out wide to Harris. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there. Second down. The frustration is definitely setting in because they've thrown it to him over and over, unable to come up with a catch thus far. I think he knew he would have his challenges against his secondary. I don't think he saw a goose egg at this point in the game. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 28. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Looking to throw, Bradshaw. It's brought in by Harris. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 